Hello again. So I want to take what we learned on inverse variation type equations and try to figure out how to graph something that looks kind of like a monstrosity, something that's very intimidating looking. And basically this is um, a equation, it's not the parent equation, the parent equation is this, but this is basically closely related to say the least. And I can graph this without using much effort, extracting much effort, and without using the graphing calculator. And that's what I'm trying to prove to you today. The uh, vertical asymptote of this problem, if you've been paying attention, is at x equals the opposite of this number, which is 2, divided by the number in front of x, which is 3. The horizontal asymptote is just the number that you're adding afterwards, which is 4. When it comes to domain and range, the domain is on these type of functions from negative infinity to infinity, excluding the horizontal asymptote. So it's not at two thirds. And the range, excuse me, the vertical asymptote, I believe I said horizontal, I meant vertical. And the range is from negative infinity to infinity, but it does not include the horizontal asymptote, which is four. So it's not equal to four. But other than that, it includes everything. Now, I'm not going to graph this perfectly. And I don't intend for it to be graphed perfectly. But what I do intend is a, a sort of understanding or sort of idea of what's actually happening here. So I graph this bad boy. Um, the vertical asymptote is at 2 thirds. So probably should raise that a little bit. And it's a positive function, which means that it's going to flow like this and this. If it were negative, it would be flipped around, which we already did. And the uh, vertical asymptote is at 2 thirds. So that's somewhere here. And my horizontal asymptote is at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So your graphs can never uh, move past any of these particular lines. Now when I graph them, my first one, like I said, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And, you know, that's just how it goes. It's going to look something like that. It won't go past the 4, and it won't hit the 2 thirds. And my next graph will look something like this. And uh, you might not believe me here, but if I substitute in the number 0, let's say, well, I might be a little off. It would be 1 over negative 2, so it would be at 3.5, so it be right there. And then you'll just kind of keep going, won't go any further, won't keep going. That's, that's pretty much it. If I substitute in the number 1, it will be uh, 3 subtract 2, which is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Plus, excuse me, if I substitute in the number 1, it will be 3 subtract 2, which is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1, plus 4, 5. So if I do that, it'll be at 5. So it'll never actually hit this axis or this axis. But that's using all the previous information we knew. If you just skipped everything and just went right to this one, you're like, what are you talking about? Why, how are you formulating these ideas? Well, I'm not. What I did was I basically did a very easy consensus of how to move the vertical asymptote, how to move the horizontal asymptote, uh, what happens when something's negative or positive, when you're dealing with inverse functions. And that's pretty much, or inverse variation, pardon me. And that's how we kind of go through it. You can also just use a graphing calculator and substitute it in, like, forget this, I'm not listening to this guy. And I mean, I suppose if your teacher allows it, it's fine, but yeah, either way. I don't know if you can actually see the top of that, but I know you can see this part. So basically, the graph looks like that. It kind of you know, looks like an exponential function um, limited by a horizontal and a vertical asymptote. It was a very quick synopsis of what we're doing there. I hope that helps. For right now, have a great day. Bye-bye.